Have you ever faced a problem when you went for an exam and couldn't answer questions even though you have revised the topics multiple times? Do you find yourself confused choosing between two options? Do you ever feel frustrated that even after revising so many times, you are not able to improve your scores? So you may end up feeling, what's the point of revising if it doesn't help you improve your marks? This begets a question, are we revising the wrong way? Is there a better way of revising? Maybe there is a method and by using this method once, the results can be better than rereading your notes multiple times. And best of all, what if I told you this is not a new technique? Most of us who have been preparing for so many exams all of our lives must have tried it quite a few times. And so you can quickly adapt to it and make your revisions more effective. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Basali, a full-time orthopedic surgeon and a faculty of orthopedics. In this video, we'll try to find out the most effective way of revisions. So without further ado, let's get on with it. See, most of us watching this video have been preparing for so many exams all of our lives and we have to revise for every exam. We know that. And the most conventional method that we know for revisions is rereading our notes. And that's no surprise because every teacher has told us to practice and revise our notes multiple times before going for any exam. But even after doing all that multiple times, I mean reading the notes multiple times, why aren't we able to recall on the exam? Maybe we are doing it wrong and that's what I want to discuss with you today. I want to remind us all of the right technique which we all used to do uh, but may have forgotten over the years of studying and getting tired. Now the technique I'm talking about is no secret. It's called active recall. And if you've been trying to find the right methods of uh, learning and studying, you must have come across this term multiple times or maybe you even know about this. This is no secret. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there teaching you about active recall. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you active recall and how we can improve on this technique to suit our exams. Now, the basic research for this technique has come from studies published in a book called Make It Stick. The book is written by a group of scientists who conducted a lot of research about the techniques and the psychology of studying and learning. It's an amazing book and if you really want to deep dive into the various science behind the study techniques and memorization, I would suggest you go and read this book. But if you can't find time to go through it, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I'll be discussing about the various techniques mentioned in this book over the course of these videos. So do that now. Hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit the bell icon as well. Now in one of the studies published in this book, the researchers took a group of students and then divided them into four groups. Now all the students were given a study material or notes to read and they were asked to study the notes in a particular way. The first group of students were asked to just read the notes once. The second group was asked to read the notes four times and the third group was asked to read the notes and then make mind maps of the content of those notes. And the last group of students were asked to read the notes once and then sit down and actively recall the information that was given in the notes. Now, after they were asked to do this, all the groups were tested. Now, the test was done both on the factual information as well as the conceptual information. And guess what? Who scored the highest? The group that was asked to actively recall the information after reading the notes once scored the highest compared to the remaining groups. And this is astounding. This research basically proved us that reading the notes once and actively recalling the information was much better than reading the notes multiple times. Now you may feel like, holy smokes, this is amazing. I never knew this. Well, that's not the case. We all knew about this all along. It's just that we must have forgotten its utility over the years of our life. I'll show you how. See, before going for any exam previously, when we were uh, younger and had more hair, don't you remember uh, covering your notes with your hands or a piece of paper, trying to recall what was written under it before going for an exam, essentially uh, testing yourself whether you have memorized or re remember it properly or not? You may also remember asking your friends to quiz you just before going for the exam. Pooch lein, jitne questions pooch lein, maine topic padh liye. Has that happened? We have done that, right? Some of us must also remember that after reading a particular topic from textbook, we used to sit down with a blank piece of paper and write down everything that we uh, remember uh, from that topic we just read. Well, most of us who have been studying all of our lives must have definitely done one of these. And that is what active recall is all about. We are basically 
testing ourselves before going for an exam testing ourselves by going into the depths of our memory to see whether we remember it properly whether the information is still there or not or whether the information inside is still in good shape or not that's what we are essentially doing now there are various other methods for active recall uh, other than the conventional methods i just talked about like uh, covering the book and uh, quizzing your friends the other methods are the flashcard methods or hiding the pages of the book as you uh, try to recall the information or practicing questions that were asked on the exams and also certain apps like anki and flash prep also helps you to active recall also with spaced repetition so the common thing between all of these methods is that you're constantly bombarding yourself with questions testing yourself asking yourself whether you've understood the topic or not to see whether you remember it or not and to assess where you're capable of reproducing the information on the exam or not now i would just like to take you through how i do it when i am studying something new or when i am preparing for an exam i know it's been many years since i've given an exam but i still consider doing this if i come across new information and i find it important uh, for my practice or work so whenever i read a topic or a piece of information i basically try to divide that uh, fundamental piece of information into a fact or a concept and i try to recall that information that i've just read asking myself what is that fact i'll give you a simple example for example if you're studying say uh, physiology say you're studying physiology or medicine you have to remember quite a lot of lab values in order to understand if something is abnormal or not so these are facts these are just numbers or facts or names or or values that you have to commit to your memory there is no understanding this so for example what is the normal calcium value you have to memorize that so whenever you're revising a topic which is say uh, the physiology of calcium you can close your eyes and ask yourself what is the normal value of calcium right 9 to 11 mg per dl that's a factual recall that's how you revise your notes for factual information another example is rate limiting enzymes in biochemistry or a nerve supplies of muscle or actions of muscles or origins and insertions of muscles when you're revising anatomy and most importantly whenever we are revising pharmacology or at least trying to revise pharmacology you will realize that there are so many drugs so they have so many classifications so just before starting the topic of revision of a particular a class of drugs ask yourself this question what are the drugs in this class and try to recall the drugs of each classification that is actively recalling a factual piece of information the second question i usually ask myself is what is the concept suppose there is a conceptual information which is not factual it's conceptual uh, it's like a pathology or a pathogenesis of a particular disease you ask yourself what is the story behind this for example if there is hypocalcemia you know that there is a secondary hyperparathyroidism following it so you can close your book and close your eyes and ask yourself what are the effects of hypocalcemia on the parathyroid so there is elevation in the pth and so what does this pth elevation do it goes to the kidney activates the one alpha hydroxylase enzyme to activate the vitamin d which helps in reabsorption of calcium from the gut the other effect of increased parathyroid hormone is to go to the kidney to reabsorb the calcium and excrete phosphate and the third method which with which the parathyroid hormone increases the serum calcium is by doing bone breakdown and hence this is how the serum calcium is restored and this This is how you revise your notes, particularly the conceptual topics. So ask yourself, what are the concepts behind this topic that you're going to revise now? Instead of just opening the notes and reading through it, that's not effective. Now the third question I usually ask myself is, how is this tested on the exam? Here, what I do is I try to recall the questions that were previously asked from that topic that I'm reading. These could be questions that were asked in a NEET exam, INI set exam, any exam doesn't matter. It is usually previous year questions, which gives you an idea what the examiner is usually focusing on the topic. This is very effective method of revision which keeps you prepared for the exam because it will allow you to know what the examiner is testing in a subject because subject can be massive so we need to focus on the topics that are frequently asked on exam now the last question i usually ask myself is a little step forward it might not be necessary for all of you but it definitely keeps you prepared for a future exam so what i would do is i would ask myself what are the potential pitfalls or traps the examiner can set up for me to make a mistake here a simple example that i would like to give you here is when i'm reading osteosarcoma i know that there is a cordman's triangle there and whenever i see that word cordman's triangle i immediately recall there is a cordman's tumor also and cordman's tumor is nothing but another name for chondroblastoma and this gives me an idea and prepares me for a potential a pitfall or a mistake that i might end up making on the exam and this is how i proceed with my revisions rather than just reading the notes top to bottom so the advantage of actively recalling the information uh, from your notes before reading them is that it allows you to not only remember it for long but also helps you
you make those network of connections between other subjects and other topics from the same subject, thereby enhancing your revision and doing revisions from the subjects that you're not even reading yet. And this trust me covers a lot of ground without you even realizing it. Now for neat UG aspirants, there is a particular app that I want to talk about. It's called Flash Prep. It has both the things, active recall and spaced repetition in it. Since we are talking about active recall, let me tell you what it has. It has both flashcards and MCQs. Now flashcards will show you a question or a word where after reading that, you will have to start thinking about the answer for it from your knowledge base. So essentially what you're doing is you're going to the depths of your brain, trying to retrieve the piece of information and you turn the flashcard around and you compare your answer that you thought of uh, with the flashcard answer, thereby helping you revise actively. This will definitely make your revision more efficient and better. Apart from that, Flash Prep also has space repetition built into it. So if you get this answer right or wrong, you can swipe it right or left. If you get it wrong, what will happen is that the app will remind you that question again, thereby asking you to recall it once again, help you strengthen your memory, thereby making your revisions more better and effective. Now the MCQs also help you actively recall. See, this is what you can do. You can read the question and answer the question. And after answering the question, try to think about the various other questions that were asked around that topic or fact. Try to think of as many as you can then hit the uh, explanation button and once you see the explanation try to match what you recalled and what you didn't and whatever you missed just read it once again and you're revising the areas which you have forgotten and everything else has been actively recalled this truly uh, increases your efficiency for revisions. And most importantly, uh, for a high stakes exam like a neat UG where there is enormous competition, I think actively recalling information will help you expedite your revision process and make you remember things for a very, very long time. Do give it a try and if you like it, great. So every time you sit down to revise, this is what I want you to do. Look at the heading of the topic that you're going to revise. Close it and start to recall everything that I asked you. Recall the facts that are tested. Recall the story of the concept. Recall all the previously asked questions around that topic. And also try to think of the potential pitfalls or traps that the examiner can set up on your upcoming exams. Now, every time you do this, trust me, you will feel exhausted. It will be very taxing on your brain. You will feel like giving up. It's energy draining, but that is what it is. That is the right method of revising rather than just sitting down, reading notes like zombies passively reading will not help you. You have to actively put in the effort to recall the information from the depths of your memory, bringing it out so that you can remember it for a very long time. The simple analogy that I would like to give here is like working out in the gym. You go to the gym, you work out, you sweat, it hurts. But over the weeks, what happens? Your muscle starts to grow. The same thing would happen with your brain. It will get fatigued when you try to recall information. But over the days, you will realize that you're actively recalling information so fast that you could never do it previously. And now if you pair this active recall with spaced repetition, that is the formula for success and remembering things for eternity. If you don't know what spaced repetition is all about, you can watch this video over here and it will help you uh, get some idea of what that technique is. So the end point here is that even if you can't revise multiple times, even if you get less revisions under your belt, your each revision by actively recalling will be much more valuable and efficient compared to the people who have done multiple revisions passively. So the takeaway message, my friends are number one, revision should never be passive. It should be active. It should exhaust you. It should drain you. And if you're not tired after revising, you're probably not doing it right. Practice a lot of questions. Ask yourself this. Why is this important? If it is a fact, what's the fact? If it's a concept, what's the story? How is the examiner going to test me on this? What will be the keywords given as hints on the question? And what kind of traps should I be prepared for in order to avoid silly mistakes on the exam? By following this simple technique of actively recalling information as as you revise, you will find yourself remembering information for a long time and coming to the solution faster than your peers. Now do tell me in the comments if you are already doing this. Also, if you try this technique, please come back and tell me in the comments how exhausting it was. Also one pro tip, if you want to remember for long on any kind of exam, don't forget to hit the like button. It's been proven by science that it can help you remember for long. Also, if you want to ace your exams, don't forget to hit that subscribe button with the bell notifications. I guess that's it. I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.